In today's video, I'm going over remotely controlling your Linux machine, and I'm giving you three different methods to do so. So I wanted to preface this before I jump into the three pieces of software I use to remote control my Linux machines with, I am not doing a typical tutorial here. Most other Linux channels would advocate using VNC or a lot of the free and open software out there. However, a lot of those are very complex to set up, involve extensive terminal work and editing of configuration files, which sometimes can get very tedious and messing around with XORG and the display servers is not a very fun task. So for this video, I'm sticking to more commercial products that offer a very ease of use so pretty much anyone can use and, and do them. So uh, if you want a more traditional or built in uh, remote control option, I'm going to go ahead and link up here. I did an Ubuntu remote desktop video a long time ago about uh, when I say a long time ago, about a couple months when my, my channel was first starting out uh, back in, I think, November. And uh, that goes over using the built-in Vino server on Ubuntu-based systems. So it would only apply to Ubuntu-based systems, but they actually have a built-in VNC server, which is very easy to actually enable. And I kind of walk you through that. So if that applies to you or something you want to mess with, just know you can actually click on that video and see that. But for today's video, I'm concentrating on every Linux distribution and also accessing them remotely. That is what it most people miss on or don't even touch on as far as what we're talking about in this one. So uh, I'm going to go over three products. And like I said, it's going to rub people the wrong way because these are commercial closed proprietary products. So there is there aren't open source, but they are commercial. And I personally trust them as they do come from bigger companies. But uh, I know that is a little faux pas for the Linux community. And it's just something I wanted to warn ahead of time before I get into my three picks for the Linux remote desktop experience. Okay, number one here is going to be TeamViewer. Obviously, no surprise here, the market standard, uh, the most popular remote control software out there, and it is pretty good. The only thing I can't, I really don't like about TeamViewer is it doesn't look very pretty and it's not very optimized. So it's a little sluggish, especially when going with higher uh, resolution, such as, you know, my big ultra wide here would be just uh, not very fun to remote in on, on a separate PC because it doesn't do a great job with scaling and multi monitors. But it's still a great option. One I still use every day when I need to remote into someone's computer remotely. I can easily just have them do a quick launch session. I type in their ID here and then just hit connect and off I go. Um, now I do know there's some issues and obviously it's not actually connecting to the team viewer servers. And I have this issue on and off uh, with my personal computer, but I got kind of zapped by lightning on one of my net cards and team viewer app doesn't work very well with that uh, crazy card. And I blacklisted it, but it still uh, reads it from time to time. And I get this, um, but Needless to say, it does work, and to set it up for yourself, all you need to do is extras and option, and you would want to start it with your system if you're using it to remote into that machine, and then assign it to the account. And you would just click this, type in your email address and password, hit assign, it'd send you an email, you'd hit add device, you'd come back in here, type it in again, and hit assign, and then it would be assigned to this machine, and as long as you have grant easy access on, you'd be good to go. And you can go away from your computer and easily remote back into it using your team viewer ID and password. However, for today's video, I'm not going to show that. I just kind of want to lay it out there because it is a great option and an easy one to set up that pretty much anyone can do on any operating system. Now I am on Arch, so to do it on us, we would just go into uh, our package manager here and type in team viewer. Now this does, I think, pull it down from the AUR and uh, install it. So 
when doing team viewer make sure you get 14.1 and not an older version like 12 and before because you won't be able to remote into other people's computers uh, because they'll be on an old version or they'll be on a newer version and the old versions don't play well with it, with each other so just know that so that is team viewer in a nutshell so let's move on to the next one so number two is going to be no machine this is a great uh local area network remote machine tool um there is no web interface where you create an account and remote in remotely however i still wanted to put it on this list because for it being just kind of a free commercial or free residential product it is just fantastic uh, so I wanted to show it. It's already installed, but it does have Debian and RHEL-based packages, and you can also install it through the AUR on Arch-based systems. But if we type no machine, you'll notice there's two prompts here. This one is the client, which means we can remote into other machines when we click this one, which obviously we want to set it up on this machine. So we just click the service. Now by default, be forewarned, it does go ahead and start the service and mark it as an automatic startup. So I don't particularly want to do this, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable the automatic startup and turn it off. Um, it uses port 4000 and the NX protocol. So you remember when I said in TeamViewer, I get pretty poor performance because it mainly goes over HTTP, which is used by a lot of different applications so you don't get great performance and it does full resolution and other things which this is a great alternative because it's much faster much snappier than team viewer counterparts however if you did want to use this to remote in from the outside world there is a lot of configuration options to do this you could set a gateway port where you could say hey i want to see any connections coming on 23,560 and then it'll get translated to port 4000 in your router now this is going to be a pretty complex setup which i'm not going to go over today because i don't recommend using no machine remotely however it is a great local area network remote access tool if you have multiple machines in either a business or your house and if you know how to do port forwarding just know you have all the options right here where you can just hit apply and be on your way and it is a fantastic option with disk printers all these redirections that you can just easily do with a click of a button and you don't have any of the limitations that you had in team viewer so uh, just know it is a great alternative uh, especially if you know how to do uh, port forwarding on your router but with that said i don't want to show this because everyone would be different on the router and if you want to remote in from the outside world the last option the third option is my absolute favorite and one i like to use so uh, i'm just going to double check make sure that i had disabled and stop the service which i did i'll go ahead and leave this installed on the machine because uh, i don't mind so for the third in my personal favorite chrome remote desktop i love the simplicity and ease of use to this uh, basically you just go to remote desktop.google.com in your browser i think chrome and chromium also work uh, if you're a firefox user i don't think this is an actual viable alternative to you but i am not so i just go here and then It'll prompt me to install a package using the main page, which let me see if I can't get there. Now nah, it's gonna actually push me into access because it already reads that I have the package installed. But if you don't have the package, it'll say, hey, do you want to install the package? You click install. This works for Debian-based systems, RHEL-based systems, and for Arch Linux, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my package manager here and you will be able to see what it is. It's actually called Chrome Remote Desktop and from chrome remote desktop you just install and build this package now you're not ready to actually configure it yet so let's go ahead and launch into terminal and i'll show you why i love this so much now when i remote in i don't want to be using my giant resolution or my really heavy kde desktop environment so i already installed lxde which is a lightweight desktop environment so from here 
I want to configure basically what my remote session will look like. So I will do CRD, just remember Chrome Remote Desktop, dash dash setup. And then it goes and walks us through our setup. First, we pick, hey, what remote desktop experience do you want? So I have Chrome, KDE, Lightweight, uh, Desktop Environment, LXDE, and Cinnamon also all installed on here. So I could pick any of these to actually remote into this PC. I personally like LXDE just because it's only about 20 megs. If I were to do the fresh install on this computer right now, it would take about 10 seconds to download and install. That's how quick and small LXDE is. So I'm just gonna write this out. And now that we've chosen that, now we choose our resolution. I'm going to go ahead and pick this small resolution. I'm okay with that. And then we just type CRD dash dash restart. And from here, we are done with the configuration. Pretty easy, but we have a lot of options with that. Now we just reload our page and we should get a turn on prompt. We'll just go ahead and name this Manjaro home. And then we just choose our pin, which I'll go ahead and type mine in my pin and then hit start. Now it's starting up and it's ready to go. So I could literally remote into this computer from pretty much anywhere. I have a Chrome browser with uh, my account associated with it. So very, very easy to set up and actually pretty darn secure. Uh, you one have to authenticate with your Google account, which is two factor. And then you also have a pin on top of that. So uh, actually uh, pretty decent as far as security goes. Now, obviously I don't want to put any servers or anything on like that because I'm super paranoid on those and I require VPNs and other things to access any of that information. But let's say my little uh, box at work that I want to get into, I went ahead and put it on there. As you see, I'm already in. So that was the whole connection process, literally just about a split second. And from here, I could easily go right in, go into my terminal and say, hey, uh, this is, I'm logged in as C Titus Arch Linux. <laughs> and as you see, this is definitely not my, my home PC. This is my little box at work. I have Arch Linux on. So I could go ahead, run every command I need, and then I just go simply log out. But do know, log out when you're done with your system. And that's with any remote desktop uh, that uses this kind of method because it will open up a new desktop experience in the background. Uh, just a, a word of warning there. You don't want a whole bunch of those. Otherwise, it's going to slow your machine down until the next reboot. But that is Chrome Remote Desktop. So that was my three picks for the remote desktop experience. And I really enjoy all three of these products. I've used them all extensively and I can say I highly recommend each and every one because they are very easy to set up and they just work. A lot of the other ones, the VNC servers, you can hack around and get working. And if you are a big open source advocate, I highly recommend you doing that because I have done that and uh, it is a rewarding experience, but it is very time consuming and a lot of the configuration can vary drastically from distribution to distribution. And you also have to do a lot of port forwarding in your gateway or router. And for that reason, that's why I stayed away from explaining those in this video. But uh, that is it for today, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I will see you on the next one.